Hey guys, this is Eve scrapbooking with me, and if you hear something in the background, it's my grandson. But uh, I've tried this video a couple of times today, and one time they turned the power off on me. The power company was working on some lines, and then he come in a little while ago, and I was in the middle of it. So let's try for a third time, and if we get interrupted, we're just going to keep going. <laughs> but anyway, today what we're going to make is this little book and I just call it a birthday anniversary book. I think it is absolutely adorable. It's got a little envelope slot for each month and then this card pulls out and you could put birthdays on one side, anniversaries on the other side. You could stamp them, write them in, whatever. And I just used some stamps that I had and wrote the months on there. And the good part about it is it is just the right size for a gift card to slide in the back so in case you want to buy a gift card early for someone say their birthday is next month and you want to buy a gift card you can go ahead and slide them a gift card in there and you'll have it all ready for them when their birthday comes around or anniversary or whatever you can go all the way through doing that if you wanted to it, it is expandable, so you could just take this out if you needed more room and just keep adding. But I think it's adorable. I'm going to keep mine in my drawer. I'm going to put all the uh, birthdays and things on there and keep it in the drawer and have it ready to go when the birthdays come about. So let's get started. The You will need a piece of cardstock, and that's for your cover. This is the cover, and it needs to be 10 and a half by 3 and a fourth. All right, the first thing we're going to do is score at four and seven eighths. So we're going to score at four and seven eighths. And score at five and five eighths. And then we're going to score at six and a fourth. And the reason we're putting that third score line in there is so that this little this part right here bends, bends back to have your opening. Okay, so that is that part. We'll go ahead and put this out of the way and burnish our score lines. Get this going. It's been one of those days around here. I know nobody else has days like that, right? Alright, so there we go. We've got those. So you see that's our, there's our front right there. Flip back. Now I'm going to go ahead and round these corners off. Figured my grandson would hear me talking and he'd come in here and want to know what's going on. Okay, we rounded our corner. So there's our little cover. And now what we're going to do is I've gone ahead, well, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and put this on our cover. I didn't mat mine, but I think I'm going to mat this one since there's so much brown there. So on the cover that has your part that turns back, that's your front, so you're going to go ahead and mat that. And I think I'm going to round these corners up too, just in a rounding mood. That means I'm going to have to use a little bit of ink. And I just inked around this with Vintage Photo. Okay. So then we're going to put that down right there. Now I'm just going to use some ATG because this is not going to have... A lot of wear and tear on it or pulling or anything like that so it'll it should hold just fine all right so then we'll lay our cover aside for a little bit now you need to use your envelope punch board and if you don't have one that is fine I'll give you the measurements so that you can make your own envelopes just whichever way you want to do it, but you need 
12 pieces that are 6 by 6. Now you can make an envelope out of these very easy by just folding them. You wouldn't have to have the envelope punch board. So if you don't have the envelope punch board, then just cut you the 6 by 6 squares and then just, um, just fold them. That's all you need to do. Alright, so we're going to put, put it in at 2 and 5 eighths. We're going to punch and let me drag this out. 2 and 5 eighths. We're going to punch and we're going to score. And then you're going to turn it and you're going to line this little pointer, I call that a little pointer, up with that score mark that you just put in there. And mine's kind of hard to see. You're going to punch and then you're going to score. You're going to turn it and line it up again. And you're going to punch and score. Turn it and line it up on your score line again. Punch and score. Okay. That has got, and I've already, I've done all of them except one because I didn't think you'd want to sit here and watch me do all 12 of them. That would have taken a little bit too long. So now all you're going to do is take your two, if you see, you've got two short sides. Here's your score line. Two short sides and then two that are kind of larger. You're going to fold your, one of your short ones up. Fold your sides up and burnish them really, really well. And then put a little bit of ATG down this, the bottom flap right there. Put some on this side and a little on this side. Whoops, I shouldn't have run that up there. Don't run it all the way up there. It's a good thing about ATG, you can just roll it right off. We're going to put that down and then put that one down. So there you've got your little envelope pocket. We're making it like the long side up. All right, then you're going to need to cut this flap off. So all you need to do is cut right at that score line. That is it. Just like that. Okay, let's do one more. All right, take your the little short flap. Fold it up. Fold your larger flaps in. Put your tape on the little flap. Fold that one over. Put your little more tape on that big one. Fold it over. And there you've got it. Simple and done. And then cut off your if I can get my hand to steady up, cut off your flap, and you've got those. Now, what you're going to need to do is have two holes at the bottom, and you can put these holes anywhere at the bottom that you'd like. You don't have to have them in a particular, and I'm going to go ahead and even this one up. So mine's a little bit off there. Okay, so all I'm going to do is take my punch. And I'm going to line one up that I've already punched out. And then I'm just going to use it as my guide. And I'm going to punch this one. Okay, then I will line this one up with that one. And punch this one out. And I think I did my punches maybe a quarter of an inch up and then about three quarters inch from each side I think is what I did mine but like I said it that doesn't really matter as long as you get all of them basically the same and then all I did is I went through and I just kind of I just used different shades of brown so I just went through and kind of alternated my patterns and make sure that all of them are turned with the um, little crisscross part up just like that you can make this out of any type paper that you want and now the 
only other thing that you need to do to these, and let me go ahead and get these back out that I made, is you need to put these in your scoreboard, and this is the tough part, especially if you're using a thick paper like I am. Put these back in your scoreboard with the little crisscross flap up and the closed in on this side, and you're going to score. And I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use this. You're going to score at three quarters of an inch. Now it's going to be tough if you've got, if you're using a thick paper. But just, you know, do it the best that you can. And then you can always take it out and go over it with something else. So that's that one. This one's really thick paper. So this one was the one that was the roughest. That's all I did right there. It's just kind of went back and forth, flip it over, do the same thing on the other side. That just helps give that bend also in your pages, just like you did your cover, if you need a bend in them. I'm probably not going to be bending mine too much, so it's not going to be a big deal. All right, now these just slip in here. But what we want to do first is, like I did on these, is I just stamped my months. Now, I'm not going to go through and stamp every one of them, but I will stamp January. Just to kind of show you how I lined it up. I put my corners that are rounded up top. And then I just laid my little January. And this is an old, old stamp that I'm sure you can't even get anymore. It just had the months in it, and so I uh, I got that, drug that out to use. So I lined that up on there like I wanted it. Put it on my little board here, and then inked it up, and then I just kind of centered it, just eyeballing it, and pressed it down. And that is all I did to each one of them. I did the same thing, okay? And then I just slid them in here one at a time. One in each month, of course one at a time. One in each month. And I didn't slide them all the way down to the bottom because you're, you're gonna wanna finish your, putting your ribbon and stuff in here first, so don't slide them all the way to the bottom. And you could use these for other things too. It wouldn't have to be the birthday anniversary thing. You could use it for, um, you know, keeping records of things, or you could use it for just about anything. Okay, so there is that. Now we need one of these in order to punch our holes in our cover. All right, so we're going to punch holes. We're going to punch holes right here, and then holes right here because that's where we're going to run our ribbon through. So I just lined that up, centering it the best that I can, and wherever my pencil might be that I don't see, oh well, we just won't even mark it. We won't use a pencil. We'll just do it this way and hope it works. Nope, it's not going to work. Because I'm going to have to have, hold on. Let me fix this. Okay. Now it will work. Alright, so I just lined it up. Punch that one. Hold it really tight. Go through and punch that side. And then I just flipped it around here on this side. Line it up with your score line. Just like you did on the front and center it in the middle, and then just slide, oh, I wish they'd make this thing where the little pieces of paper would come out of it, when you punch, slide that in there, punch it, and punch it, there you go, you've got your holes in the sides, so now we'll thread our ribbon, and I've got two ribbons here, and I'm kind of undecided as to which one to use. I think I might actually use this one. 
This is some that I got in a Bow Bunny package. So I think I might use this one. I'm just going to cut my ribbon off at a point. And I'm going to pull it through. Now this is a single sided ribbon so it's going to it's going to be my problem if I can't get this same side lined up. Probably have it upside down and every which way. Alright, so let's All right, put that in there like that. I guess I could have flipped it over, but that's fine. And now just start putting your your little um, pages in. And I will fast forward right here so that you won't have to watch me put each one of these pages in here. And then we will be right back. Okay, so we have all of those threaded through there. And now we'll put our ribbon through the top part and you know just pull it down you don't have to pull it tight tight just pull it down some and then we'll see if we can tie this and keep the pretty part out see what we can do here. I have to flip it over. Uh, flip it over. No, no, no. Alright, let's try that again. Tight. I want to flip that over. There we go. Somebody told me that they could show me how to tie perfect bows every time. They don't know me very well. So there we go. We'll trim that off there. And trim that off. So that is our little book. Isn't that cute? I absolutely love it. Once you get all your months stamped on there. And then of course you can, you know, go through and limber it up a little bit but we're going to decorate the front first and all I did was I took my two and a half inch scallop punch and I punched out a circle there and then I punched out a brown one and I'm just going to offset those and I think I'm just going to use some glue and see the back side of this was already used for something else but that's okay nobody will see the back side so we're going to put that about right there. And then we'll take our, let me make sure that this is going to offset right. Yeah. Take our brown piece. And we'll just offset it. And that makes it look like that there's a border around it. And then I think this is just some metal pieces from Bow Bunny that I had in my stash. And I'm thinking I want to use that there. And then, or maybe that in the center. And then see it's flowers on the back. I'm not real sure. Oh, yeah, I think I like that. Okay. Let's put this on. Let's use the brown. Oh yeah, that'll work. Oops, not work upside down. I know, I have a pickup tool for this and I'm not using it. Hot glue gets all heated up. We'll use it to glue that down. 
Okay, so we glued that down with hot glue, and then I put a little bit of hot glue on these, under these flowers, just to, well, it looks like I put it on them too, didn't I? Uh, come off, there we go. Put a little bit under those, just to kind of hold them down. And that is our little, I guess you could call it, anniversary, birthday, um, memorabilia, keeper book I don't know what to call it but you know you could also use this as a Mother's Day gift and just put some the kids uh, pictures or whatever in there wouldn't that be pretty but I think they're adorable I think they're so cute and they're easy to make this one I put some Wink of Stella on of course you know I have to put Wink of Stella on there this one I haven't I think it's okay like it is but I hope you give this a try. Like I said, that it's super easy. It takes about, <clears throat> excuse me, it takes about three, maybe four sheets of paper. So, you know, use your scraps. Use your scraps to um, get this done. I used exactly what I had right at my desk. I just happened to have some of these colors at my desk, and that's what I used. So, there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today, and let me see what you've done. Show me. You know, remember our challenge. Show me what you have done. Post the pictures on our Facebook page. And we will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.